argue that the Armenian Genocide of 1915 was driven by the Ottoman government's desire to achieve a Muslim national identity through religious cleansing. However, Armenians were the only group targeted for mass extinction, even though the empire consisted of other Christians and a variety of religious groups. So why were the Armenians really targeted? In 1900, the Ottoman Empire was one of the most demographically diverse states in the world. Turkish territory hosted a multitude of religions and cultures. Except for slight and frequent skirmishes, all groups within the empire, including Christians, were left in peace. The Armenian Genocide was not motivated by a nationalistic religious fervor, but rather served as a strategic response to the Russian threat Armenians were perceived to embody. After the Young Turk Revolution of 1908 came the adoption of a constitution that embraced the heterogeneity of the empire. All people, including Armenians, would have a say in political affairs as well as representation in government. In 1911, a political appeal for Turkish citizens to unite was written in nine languages, including Armenian. Right up to the Great War, the Ottoman government endorsed Turkish-Armenian citizenship. Armenians had every reason to see themselves as Turks. Yet in 1915, the genocide occurred. Since the Armenians were the only group targeted for extermination, we know the genocide wasn't motivated by religious intolerance. The Young Turks were inspired by political reform, not outdated religious zeal. In a report to the British government discussing the October 1915 phase of the genocide, historian and British official Lord James Bryce revealed that Muslims concurred that the government was not acting out of religious bias in the slain of Armenians, and that the average Muslim was horrified by the genocide, while religious leaders condemned the government's atrocities regardless of the reason. Not only the government, but the Turkish people, including Muslims, did not see the genocide as a vehicle for eliminating the Armenian Christian element. With tensions rising at the inevitability of World War I, the Turkish government saw genocide as a response to the perceived threat of Russia and Turkish Armenian citizens. Russia had a history of eyeing Ottoman territory. After the Russo-Ottoman War of 1877 to 1878, Russia gained Turkish territory through the San Stefano Treaty. Four months later, Russia amended the treaty to mandate Ottoman reforms that benefited the Armenian nation. Russia was trying to support native Christian people living in a predominantly Muslim enemy state. Russia hoped for a favorable Turkish-Armenian alliance in the future. In June 1914, Russia crafted a reform plan that insisted that six eastern provinces of the Ottoman Empire be consolidated and awarded to the Armenians. Suspecting a clandestine collaboration between Russia and Turkish Armenians, the Ottoman Empire joined World War I in October 1914 as a central power in an effort to dispose of the Russian Although the Young Turks were suspicious of a possible enemy alliance from within, the Armenians remained safe until the spring of 1915. It was then that the Ottoman military saw defeat in an important fight in Caucasia. The Young Turks attributed the loss to Armenian treason. Immediately, the Turkish government started forcefully expelling Armenians from Ottoman territory. Turkish Minister of the Interior Mehmet Talat explained that Turkish Armenians helped the Russians there is only one way in which we can defend ourselves against them in the future, and that is to just deport them. The first step of the genocide had begun. Deportation served as a euphemism for death. Men, women, children, young and old, were shipped in cattle cars to the desert and were then marched to distant concentration camps. Countless people died from the hardship of the journey or beatings along the way. Those who made it to the camps perished from exposure, lack of food and water, or eventual execution by gun or bayonet. The severity of this vicious abuse reveals how sincerely the young Turks believed a treasonous alliance existed between the Armenians and Others met their fate at the coast. After being shipped like cattle as far as the train lines would go, Armenians were loaded onto boats, taken out into the Black Sea, and pushed overboard to their deaths. Those who somehow managed to avoid deportation still found death waiting. Armenian citizens throughout the empire were driven to extinction through captive starvation. Others were killed for sport, 
Some were burned alive, some were hanged from their arms, some were beaten to death. Intellectuals were tortured to death using techniques designed to draw out confessions of non-existent Russian alliances. Within a year, almost the entire Turkish-Armenian nation was killed by the government they once trusted. Aside from the inhumanity, the genocide was unjustified because the Turkish Armenians posed no threat to the security of the state. There was no secret alliance. Even to the end, Armenians firmly saw themselves as Turks. Lord Bryce's report found that only a small group of Caucasian Armenians were acting as allies to Russia. Turkish Armenians were not guilty in any way of treason. Even if a collaboration had existed, Turkish Armenians were outnumbered and outclassed by the Turkish military, so an assault would have been futile. Additionally, before the start of the genocide, only 12% of the Turkish population consisted of Armenians, most of whom were peasants and villagers, and 100% thought of themselves as Turkish. The Armenians fully believed themselves to be Turks and allies of Germany. The Armenians were convinced that Germany would not want mistreatment of allied people. Armenians speaking to German school teachers explained, the Germans do not want these horrors. Perhaps the German nation does not know about them. They do not refer to being Christian or mention any suspicion of a Russian conspiracy. To the end, Armenians were wondering what they did wrong, and this ignorance is strong proof of their innocence. At the end of World War I, the Allies identified the atrocities against Armenians as crimes against humanity. The UN has proclaimed that what happened to the Armenians was a genocide. In 2015, Pope Francis called it the first genocide in the 20th century. Nevertheless, in defiance of the international community's label of genocide, the policy of the Turkish government then and now is to deny that there was an organized effort to exterminate the Armenians. Article 301 of the Turkish Criminal Code makes it illegal to publicly insult the Turkish state. The Turkish government has imprisoned Turkish Nobel laureate in literature, Oren Pamuk, as well as numerous Turkish journalists who have publicly challenged the government's denial of guilt. By allowing the Turkish government to continue to deny what happened to the Armenians, the door is open for others to commit mass exterminations without fear of accountability. Prior to invading Poland during World War II, Adolf Hitler said, I have put my death head formations in place with the command, relentlessly and without compassion, to send into death many women and children of Polish origin and language. Who, after all, is today speaking about the destruction of the Armenians? The Jewish Holocaust, Rwanda genocide, and most recently the Syrian massacres have all followed the Turkish Armenian extermination. Sinister leaders will continue to use genocide as a weapon if they believe their atrocities can be committed without ownership. The Armenian genocide was not executed for the purpose of national religious zeal, but because of a belief that it was necessary to quell the suspected threat of Armenian alliances with Russia. Unless something changes in the international response to acts of genocide, we can expect them to continue. And indeed, if there is a political purpose, we can be certain we will see more in the future.